Hello, and welcome back to The Grunt Perspective. And in today's video, I'm gonna show off my survival kit, or my infantryman survival kit. <clears throat> so if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I've alluded to this kit a couple times, um, and I've gotten a lot of requests to break this down. Uh, before I break it down, there's a couple things that I really need to talk about with this. Um, number one, I've had the opportunity to participate in training where the only thing that I had to live for a couple days was this. It wasn't in this exact pouch, but I had a lot of the same contents and I've changed some stuff since then. But um, if you can absolutely bear to do it, do that. Because I'm telling you, it will open your eyes to what is really important, what isn't important, how far you can push your body and how far is too far, and you just can't go an anymore. Get, get to know your limits, things like that. And you get to know like what is actually realistic. Um, if you can do that, you should absolutely do that. Where, you know, it should be safe. Make sure that you're not gonna die out there um, alone. But um, it's not that hard to do. And if you can do that, I'm telling you, your soldiers and your Marines are going to thank you for it because it's going to, it's going to really put them, it's going to open their eyes and it's going to change the way that they think about the field entirely. <clears throat> um, now, survival in general is something that the modern infantryman needs to be prepared to do or survival or escape and evade. Um, they're slightly different, but a lot of people use them for the same term. Um, survival is something that is a field craft skill, um, but it just, we just, is you don't have the opportunity to practice that much. And the reason being is because it's inherently very dangerous to practice. It's very dangerous to uh, get your guys out, out, out in the field and you tell them that you're gonna push them just to the threshold of where like they're done, like they're completely done and they're gonna go down. And then, you know, you tell them to live like that for several, several days. And it's, it's, um, it's a shame, but it's something that you need to do. You need to do it because in our next war, it's something that's going to happen. Guys are gonna go missing uh, for several days, weeks maybe. And if they haven't done that prior to that being their first time, they, they won't survive. And so you need to do it now and get your guys ready for it because um, it's, a, it, 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 it's a gut check. It's a real gut check. Um, so, yeah, I covered my spiel on that. Um, so I want to introduce a couple concepts to you guys on how I make my survival kits. Uh, if you're already familiar with the, with, uh, the rule of threes and the ten C's, you can just fast forward. But um, the rule of threes I'll start with, and they are listed in the order of what's gonna kill you first. And so these are the things that you need to be prepared for. Number one, three minutes without air. If you're drowning, there's nothing that a survival kit is gonna be able to help you with though. So uh, number two, three hours without shelter. This is gonna be dependent on your environment, obviously. If you're in a fair environment, no big deal. It's just a walk in the park, right? It's a nice warm day out. However, if you're in extreme heat or extreme cold, three hours without shelter, without shade, or without warmth, you're, you're gonna die. Um, three days without water. Everyone knows about this one, three days without water. Uh, three weeks without food, most people know about that one. I'll tell you from experience, three weeks without food, um, you go about three or four days without food, it feels Horrible. It is one of the worst feelings. You will never be hungry and tired like you will be when you eat or when you don't eat for three or four days. Um, and then once you get past that, your stomach kind of shrinks a little bit and you stop feeling it so much. But food, very important. Um, now over to the 10 C's. If you don't know, uh, the 10 C's were made by a guy named Dave Canterbury. He's a wilderness survival expert guru guy. Uh, he's been doing this for years and years and years and years and years. And he's identified 
10 things that are, that he believes to be the most important. And I agree with him because he's right. Um, and they're listed in order of importance. So the number one is a cutting tool. Number two, uh, combustion, a way to make fire. Number three is cover to get you some shelter. Number four is a container. Get you some water. Uh, what he suggests is you have a steel container so you can put the whole container straight into the fire. Uh, I don't have one of those, but I'm probably going to get one of those very soon. Number uh, five is uh, cordage. Um, cordage can go with shelter. It can go with all of these things. Um, <clears throat> there's no way to replicate cordage in nature. You could say vines, but vines do not work. They're, they break very quickly. Uh, so you need to have some cordage with you because you can use it for a thousand things. Number six is a cotton bandana or a, or a cravat. You can use it just as a head covering, pre-filter, just a rag, something, something to just have a rag, you know. Uh, cargo tape, 100 mile an hour tape, duct tape, compass, a cloth sail needle, which is just a thick needle that you can use to stitch up uh, tarps, uh, tents, gear, uh, your your clothing, or even in an extreme scenario, you can use it to suture. Uh, and number 10 is a candling device or a headlamp or a flashlight or something like that. Um, so on the subject of this, I keep a lot of this stuff spread loaded throughout my kit. Uh, and it's not really a big deal because I always have my kit on me as an infantryman, but if you're not an, an infantryman, then this is a good place to start for what you should keep inside a survival kit. Um, yeah. Now, to talk about the way I actually carry this thing and these tools. Number one, the, there's a couple things that are always going to be on me. Uh, inside my inside my pockets and and we'll, and and one of those things is is a compass so that covers that always inside my left shoulder pocket it's always dummy corded so I never lose it um, right up there. Another, another thing that's always going to be on me is a knife uh, a fixed blade knife if I'm wearing a chest rig this is the one that I'll that I'll be wearing uh, but if I'm wearing my plate carrier and belt I have a knife on my belt for my plate carrier too and. Uh, Odds are that you're going to be ditching, escaping, and evading with your kit on. Um, so, but if if not, that knife is on my belt very quickly and easily to take off. So I can take it off and go with it. <clears throat> so the way that I carry this thing, um, if if I'm with my rucksack, I, it's inside of my rucksack on the top pocket of my rucksack. Uh, very easy to get to very fast. It's always it in that pocket. It, it never moves. I don't use that pocket anyway. Um, it stays right there. Uh, it comes out if I'm going on patrol, uh, be it a, I don't know, a multiple day patrol or something. I might take my whole field craft kit, but if it's a one day, two day patrol, I just take this thing out, put it inside my patrol pack. And then from there, I go from there with it. Now, if I'm ever away from my pack. Uh, this thing goes either around my waist with the strap if I'm wearing uh, a chest rig, or I wrap up the strap like this and I put it inside of this pocket on my plate carrier. Just in there, goes in there, I zip it closed, and then I'll have water in the, in the back of my plate carrier too. Should I'll always be with you. Because you know, you never know. Uh, there's been, like, example. There's been countless times throughout his history where guys have gone on the attack, right? And they've uh, just taken what they need to go on the attack. And then once they get there, they have to hold the position that they just attacked for several days before they have the opportunity to get reinforced, get relieved, or get back down to their gear. Um, and that's a, that's, that's a real thing. That's a real conventional war thing, right? So you need to have some of this stuff on your fighting kit, um, on, on your body, because you know, if you have to hold that position throughout the night and in the night where you are, it gets down to like 
35 degrees, which isn't that cold, but it's definitely cold enough to be a danger if you have nothing, right? Um, so it's a consideration. It's, it, it's happened lots and lots and lots of times. So either way, um, this stuff needs to be on you because if like, for all the reasons that I just mentioned, it needs to be on you. Uh, so this is always quick, fast, and uh, ready to go. Uh, in addition, I keep a couple things ready as well. Number one, uh, a Nalgene with a canteen cup. Real easy, I just grabbed this out. Uh, big ticket item here would be the canteen cup because it's made of steel. Um, and I just grab that out if I need, ever need to ditch my stuff for any reason. Um, number two and three here are some tools. So this could be any tool. This one specifically is an ax, right? But if you have a machete, then you just rig something up like this. But I have it rigged up, so I have an easy way to carry it. If I wanted to grab it and sling it around my body and I carry it like that, which I've done before, it works great. Um, and yeah, uh, just ready to go. This, this tool is always on the exterior of my rucksack tucked right behind one of my pouches or, you know, whatever tool that I'm, that I'm using is always there. So if I need to, I, I can just pull it out and go. <clears throat> just 550 core on there. Another thing that I have liked to do is two quart canteen pouch. Uh, you know, this has always got the gator clips onto the side of my rucksack, but what I do with it is if I ever needed to, I just undo these gator clips. I take this thing and go with it. And then whenever I have the opportunity to, I take a knee and I pull the strap out. Uh, and then I shut it again like that. And now I have a way to carry this thing other than just hand carrying stuff because Chances are I'm going to be hand carrying some other things like, you know, my rifle. Um, so having this extra two quarts of water is of course good. Um, so yeah, I keep the strap all on there just so it's easy to go quick. And if I ever need to, I can just grab the whole thing. All right. Now to talk about what actually goes inside the survival kit. So the survival kit itself is a Spiritus, I think it's a Fanny Sack Mark III or IV or whatever it is. It's a Fanny Sack. Uh, but you can see it's pretty small, relatively compact, uh, but it holds the, just enough gear to where I'm comfortable with. Um, so I'll start bringing it down here. Um, it's got two pockets. It's got a large interior pocket and then it's got a uh, large, well not large, it's got a flat exterior pocket. I don't keep anything in particular in either pocket for any specific reason, but uh, the flat items fit a little bit better inside the flat pocket, obviously, so that's where the most of them are. Uh, open that up. First one, first thing that's up here is a little like boo-boo kit, just some band-aids, some antiseptic wipes, some neosporin, uh, you know, just if you nick yourself with one of these tools, then um, having a way to cover it up will be good for you. Keep the infection away, hopefully keep you alive a, a little bit longer. Next thing I have here is a space blanket. Uh, this is a space blanket wrapped in some tape to keep it nice and strong, as well as this space blanket is silver on one side, you know, the normal space blanket, but it's bright orange on the other side. And that may seem counterintuitive, but it's good to, it doubles as an air panel if you're trying to get rescued, which, you know, you are trying to get rescued. So I've got a couple of those. I think I have two of those. Um, but yeah, space blankets are going to be good for you. Uh, two, two pieces of aluminum foil here. What I've used them for is uh, to cook things. Uh, it, you know, it's gonna be kind of hard to like cook like a fillet of fish or something like in a canteen cup. I mean, you, you could totally do it, but either way, um, I just use these, fold them out, put them down on the fire, nice and as good as I can. And uh, you can cook some little things on there like that. <clears throat> Next, I have a, a, a medium and a fine grit stone for my knife and my hatchet. Keep my tools nice and sharp. 
You know, you don't know how long you're, you're, you're going to be out there. So having something to maintain your tools is going to help you out for uh, quite a bit. Last, or the last, last two things I keep in this pocket are a lighter and a chem light. The lighter is rel relatively self-explanatory. Use a lighter to make fire. Um, yeah, easiest way to make fire, just so just use, use a lighter. Next thing I have here is a chem light. Uh, no specific color, but what you should do uh, is you should have some sort of signaling plan, lost, lost marine, lost soldier plan, to where they have a, a signal that they can use to hopefully get rescued. Um, it could be uh, this on a buzzsaw, spin it around really quickly. Uh, it could be some sort of marking on the road or path that they're hiding in. Uh, it could be whatever, but you need to establish a, a SOP for it. And then you need to make sure that all of your Marines or soldiers are carrying that. Uh, so they have the ability to do that if they ever need to do that um, inside their survival kit right so one chem light more or less an example of what you can do there's lots of different ways to do it uh, I, I've seen like PT belts it, uh, again with the glow belts that look super goofy but you know they've I've seen people use those for signals uh, so that could be another option as well that isn't gonna like run out of juice like a chem light is. So that's a good option for that. Uh, now, onto the main compartment here. Okay, so right here on the top, I've got some cargo tape, just some 100 mile an hour tape wrapped around two pieces of cardboard. What I use that for is I've used it to make light repairs on my shelter, which I'll get to inside here, uh, my stuff, uh, my uniform you could use for a little bit, be a little quick fix, um, but it's just a good thing to have. There's a thousand different uses for tape, so you know, you'll know you more or less find a use for it. Next thing I have, two cliff bars, about 500 calories worth of food. Uh, just like I talked about in, in the beginning, like you, yeah, technically you, you can go three weeks without food, but from experience, I'm telling you, it is miserable. And just having something to eat, even if it's half a cliff bar a day, uh, at least mentally, it'll make a difference for you. Uh, it wouldn't really be that big of a difference. Another thing that, that, that you could carry would be like lifeboat rations. Uh, they're like these super small vacuum sealed bars that are like, <laughs> they're like 600 calories in one of these bars. That'd be like a really good way to go, um, but the last time that I replenished this kit, they didn't have they didn't have any, so I just went I, I just went with the cliff bars. Um, yeah, uh, a little bit of food if you can manage to carry it is definitely a good a good thing to have. Um, inside here, I got some dryer lint that I use for a fire tinder. Um, being able to make a fire quickly, depending on your environment, might, might be something that saved your life. So uh, I try to make this kit to fit any environment that I may find myself in, so I carry fire tinder in it. <clears throat> Next thing I have, uh, three Ziploc bags. I think these are like half, uh, half gallon size or something like that. But what I've used these for is, to, is just to collect things like wild edibles, fruits, fruits, vegetables, and mushrooms, things like that, uh, throw it inside a bag. So, um, you know, one, it's all contained, two, it maybe stays a little bit fresh, keeps the, keeps the flies and the ants and stuff out of them. <clears throat> so co collect them up, um, or you could use them for other things like papers or something like that. But super versatile thing that I find myself uh, um, I use almost every time that I go to the field is a couple zip ziplock bags, so I found them a good thing to carry. Next, I have a fire steel as a backup to uh, the lighter. Uh, this is a really high quality one. You should really get high quality stuff to put inside your survival kit because you know you're going to need it to survive. Uh, this is a light uh, light my fire, and in addition, it has a whistle on there, which is again something that you could use to enact self-rescue 
Uh, all of this is depending on if you, as the leader, take the time to work this stuff in and your plan. Um, so don't be a dirtbag. Do your job. Number, I don't know what number, but this is a 550 cord, flat packed on a roll of, uh, well, a toilet paper roll. Um, about 50 to 75 feet of 550 cord there. What I've used 550 cord for a lot is to lash sticks together to make my shelter. Uh, I've used it to hang stuff up. I've used it to hang up uh, the water filtration, like the gravity filter bags, uh, which are usually given to like, to like rifle squads uh, when they go out and train in environments like that. So I've, I've, I've used those. Um, but it's super versatile stuff, like you need to have it, uh, 5, 550 cord, even if it's just replacing bootlaces or something like that. Um, so, yeah, 550 cord. Next thing I got here are three one liter capacity uh, bags to carry water in. I believe they're made by Whirlpack, but um, if I, for whatever reason, I didn't have the opportunity to grab this two quart, or maybe this happened while I'm on patrol. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity to grab this two quart and grab this. I still had a container to carry water in. Granted, it's not a container that I can boil water in, but uh, I have some tablets which I'll which which, which I'll get to. Um, <clears throat> Next thing here, uh, you can't tell what this is because it's wrapped in tape to protect it, but these are. 30 uh, uh, catadin tablets to purify water. Um, I chose the catadin ones because they are rated to kill ev everything, uh, be it the cryptosporidium cyst, uh, bacteria, viruses, everything. Um, you just drop one per one liter and it's good to go. Um, so that's a definitely a useful thing to have, uh, definitely a necessary thing to have. If you saw my field craft, kit video, you know that I have some of these too, but like I said, um, there, this is a, this is a different kit than a field crap kit is. So got to carry redundancies. This is a cravat. This fits the cotton bandana, uh, the uh, category. And what I've used this for is, um, to pre-filter water mostly. Uh, but you could use it for a head covering, you could use it for a sling. It's useful to just have a rag to wipe your hands with or to go to the stream and clean yourself with a little bit. Um, so having a rag is a good thing to have. And then inside of it, I keep a small signal mirror. Just a little small guy. Uh, but it's, you know, one of those things that, again, if worked into your signal plan or your plan in general, uh, could enact self-rescue. It's also just useful to have a mirror so you can look at yourself, you can look at your face uh, and see what's going on with, with your face. Um, so yeah, keep you sane a little bit. Another thing, I have an, another of the same survival blanket. Again, you know, orange on one side, silver on one side. And the reason why I carry two is because I've used them to like make a sandwich, more or less. Um, you know, when you're making a shelter, you make, you know, your overhead cover, and then you should make stuff on the bottom. It should be a big pile of leaves and things like that, or sticks, pine needles, something like that, to create a little bit of insulation, uh, to hold some of that warm air under you. Um, because the ground, like it doesn't hold any of that air and so people say it sucks the heat out of you which it does um, but What I've used it is if it's getting too cold I can lay one blanket down below me and I can lay another blanket down on top of me Or I, I could have one to use to line the inside of my shelter with to keep some of that heat inside my shelter And I could use one as a blanket or something like that. So I carry two because I think they're pretty versatile um, Definitely a useful thing to have. On the last thing that I keep inside here on, on, on the subject of shelter is a contractor bag. Uh, this is like a 42 gallon contractor bag, three mil thick. 
And what I've used these for is to supplement my natural shelter. Uh, I unfold it, I keep it wrapped with a little bit of tape just to keep it uh, all together. But I've used it to supplement my natural shelter by, you know, I open it up, I cut it on, on the side with my knife or if I have like a multi-tool with the scissors or something on there, which I would have if I was wearing my kit. Um, and I make it into a tarp and I can use that. It's, it, it's big enough to cover like one person's body uh, relatively comfortably. Uh, it's not gonna cover your feet, but either way, uh, and it keeps the radar off of you. It can help keep wind, um, or you could also use it in the reverse or where you could cut it or you could not cut it and you could put all of your sticks and stuff down on, on the ground to make your little bed, your pine needles, uh, leaves and things like that. And then you could put that on top of it uh, to kind of keep it all contained or you could put it all in the bag. Uh, 55 gallon bags are super useful. Um, I think, you know, just the, the protection from the rain is going to be something that like, you know, it's the, it, it, it's a constant fight to stay dry. Uh, so being, having the protection from the rain is definitely the biggest advantage that this goes into the shelter category, uh, or, or the cover or, or the cover category in addition with, uh, the space blankets, things like that. Um, and that covers ev everything that goes inside here. Uh, it's not a whole lot. Um, and you know, having lived out of this stuff before, I can tell you that you're roughing it and that's the way that it's supposed to be. Unless you want to carry a whole big old like survival backpack thing, um, then you're going to be roughing it. But that being said, um, like I said in the beginning of, of the video, if you have any opportunity to do this kind of training, you need to do it because it is going to open your eyes as to what is actually important, what isn't important, and like how much you can go. Um, it's going to let your soldiers or your Marines identify things that they need with them, the things that they don't need with them. Um, and just in general, a little bit of mental toughness you're going to build up with them. In the next war, this is going to be something that is going to be expected of the infantrymen to be able to do. Or, you know, it's not going to be expected of you, but it's going to happen. I'm telling you, it might not happen to you, but it's going to happen to someone. And if you are in a leadership position, you're not doing your job to get the people that are below you completely ready, uh, then, you know, it's on you. So, um, this is a really highly requested video. I'm really glad that people are into this, this kind of thing. And, um, I really hope that this video opened up your eyes about just a little bit of the full, the, the philosophy about survival and things like that. Uh, so on a, another heavy hearted end, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.